My name is Herman and I'm a writer at Thought Conversation. Today I'm with Linda Black. She is a personality on TV. Uh, you may have seen her in many channels uh, and networks such as HBO Asia, Food Network Asia, and uh, even Discovery Channel. She's done plenty of hosting and modeling and she champions uh, social causes. She's gonna try to look as natural as possible because I'm really awkward around women. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, you've been in the media industry for quite a while now. Uh, that includes your modeling and that includes your hosting. Mm. Uh, what is the biggest misconception about the industry itself, the space of entertainment and just show business? One of the first huge misconceptions is that uh, models make fantastic TV hosts, actors, and things like that, because they don't. Um, it depends on the person, it depends on their, their comfort level being in front of the camera. I would say that's probably number one. I don't know how many times you'll, you know, I've been here for six years already modeling, and uh, you don't know how many times they'll just throw models in front of the camera, and they need them to speak uh, very clearly, with a nice accent, great diction, and, um, and a lot of these models come from maybe Brazil, Russia, Romania, where they've got very thick accents, and of course they're not suited for it, but uh, that's, that's like the number one entry level thing that I can think of at the moment. When women look at magazines and they see Photoshop, uh, they, they do not know of all the women who are on the covers of magazines uh, being touched up and mm. altered, and they somehow feel the need to uh, just manifest what they see in media and mm. on print onto their own being and their self. Uh, sometimes it ends up a little bit self-destructive. Oh, yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. it just uh, we we see anorexic uh, women and uh, women suffering from just eating disorders and stuff. Yeah. What's your take on that? Right. My first forays in front of the camera in Singapore were right after the two sisters uh, from South America had, um, they were eating lettuce leaves and drinking Diet Coke to slim oh, wow. down to make it into the shows. But what happened was both of them died of heart attacks as soon as they stepped off the runway. Because your, your body needs nutrients, it needs food, you must eat. I'm not going to starve myself to, to stay waif-like. Yeah. I don't think it's beautiful, I don't think it's powerful, I don't think women naturally look that way, so I'm against it. I was the first one to come out and say, I'm not losing weight for this, and I'm Kudos. not going to... I'm not. It, it, plus, I appeal to women that are, you know, career women in their 30s who are strong and who are, are healthy. These are the women I want to market for because they, they're the ones that make the money. I am uh, not doing too well with the girls because I'm kind of <laughs> meek and I, I stutter when I see uh, girls that I feel a, little, uh, a lot of butterflies in my stomach for. <laughs> Let's talk about confidence. The best thing is to not be afraid because someone like me, um, this is how I grew up, mm -hmm. right? I was a wallflower. I never spoke to anybody. Mm -hmm. I, I kept always to myself. I had one friend in high school. You actually would two. never tell that just from the no. interview itself. No, no, no. And even my father still marvels. He's like, how did you go from being such a mouse to being so outspoken and in front of the camera and you talk to everybody? I, was, I don't know. But it's just, after a while, I just got tired of people walking all over me. You know, so I'm like, okay, fine, I'm going to stand up for myself, because if I don't stand up for myself, no one will. That's true. So I do it for myself. For me to come out of my shell and start, you know, even talking to guys, because that was difficult for me. I couldn't do it. Oh, wow. It no happens way. both ways. I'm no hoping way. I can find a secret formula. The formula is, honestly, to, to be honest, be yourself, and, and just say, you know what, here I am. Mm. And be funny. Be Girls funny. Girls like me like that. You know, they like the quirkiness, and I'm a nerd. I uh, love graphic novels. You want to talk to me about DC Batman. comics? Here? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> I'll talk to you all day about that. I love it. Um, I love. You're movies. like everybody's dream girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to crush your hopes afterwards. I'll tell you what. There's a lot of girls out there who are someone's dream girl, uh -huh. but I think a lot of these girls have other issues that keep guys from you, like you, mm. from talking to them. Like yeah. They might be a little more high maintenance, or they might be thinking, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I need to play this role that I'm going to be a girly girl." There's no role. They, they might no be strutting across the catwalk in lingerie you and being 
them as victorious angels. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Um, my husband, what he did is he just came out and started talking to me. Oh. Just confident. That's it. And, and he was funny. That's huh. it. He just made me laugh. He still makes me laugh to this day. Yeah. That's brilliant. And Humor. <laughs> works. The thing about uh, being funny, I've been asked by my friend, how do you go about being funny? And you either are or you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, do not try too hard. Don't, exactly, exactly. Don't try too hard. And I'll tell you something else. Like Most models, they, they, they might seem unapproachable, mm -hmm. but they're not. They're actually very insecure. Very insecure. And they'll always have a wall up at first. But if you're nice, and you're just smiling, and you're polite, and you're honest, you'll get under that exterior. Oh my Definitely. god, this is an exclusive. Definitely. Now some models aren't worth getting to know. <laughs> gotta keep looking. There's someone out there for you. And you, and you, and you. We'll see. <laughs> Who, whoever's out there for me, I'm just gonna leave my number in the article itself. It's mm -hmm. gonna be down there. Mm -hmm. Forget about roles. Yep. Don't be like, oh, well, I'm the man, and I'm gonna open the door, and I'm gonna pay. Forget about it. As soon as you start falling into roles, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. Just be mm -hmm. yourself. Be yourself and you'd be happy. Be yourself, be honest, be happy. Yeah, the happier you are, the more attractive and glowing that you are. So people will be attracted to you as well. That's true. That's why I download Fruit Ninja. Because <laughs> it makes a lot of girls happy. Here's a question for the mummies. Okay. Uh, what's it like being a mum? There was one saying that uh, was told to me right after I did become a mom. The saying goes, being a mother is the bravest decision you can ever make because you elect to have your heart walk around outside of your body. That's what it feels like to be a mother. Oh wow. That's I just true. felt chills around my it's body. It's true. And not... Just the imagery itself. <laughs> and giving birth to a child does not automatically make you a mother. A mother, is, a mother is anyone who's nurturing, who, who can nurture a small thing to become so much more than what it started out as. That's a mother. That's why they call Teresa mother. Oh yeah. She had no children, but the, you know, she was nurturing and she nurtured a lot of people across the world. Who's the hottest superhero? Superhero. Oh, that's, that's Batman. Ba I want to be Batman. Awesome. Batman is the most awesome superhero ever. Wait, you want to be Batwoman? No, no. I want to be Batman. <laughs> you want to be Batman. More respect. He's got more power, he's got, oh, I'm just awesome. Okay, you might have a few more psychoses, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, when, when you run around in a bat suit, you have to be a little bit unorthodox in the way you think. He is my favorite for TV and movie, but my favorite he, in the he comics He only gets is, away um, with the thing he does because he's a billionaire. Uh, yeah, obviously, <laughs> If obviously. you do not have money and you're running around in a bat suit, let's see you do that. He is, he is great and he's, he's awesome on screen. I uh, love uh, Christian Bale as oh. Batman as well, but the, the, my absolute favorite uh -huh. superhero in the comics is uh, Nightwing, who Nightwing. is the first Robin. First Robin oh. grew up and became Nightwing. He is my favorite. As we approach the, the end of the world, uh, 2012, right? Um, <laughs> what are the trends that you, you'd see uh, becoming more prevalent? New trends? Yeah. This is a tough question. For your space. For your space of entertainment and media. I would think more reality shows, mm -hmm. like the Kardashians. Uh, you can look forward to more of that. Uh, you can also look forward to more documentary type stuff where it's nice because Singapore uh, consciousness, yeah. the Singapore consciousness is starting to to, to mature, it's starting to mature. So there's understanding now of human trafficking, mm -hmm. poverty, uh, worldly issues, and that's going to be, uh, on a serious note, trending in 2012. We're more <coughs> connected now than ever before, thanks to social media, mm -hmm. um, and that we're not all so different. We're all not islands. We're all the same people. That's true. Not just Singapore. Even but all even over the Guidos in Jersey Shore. They're my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you wish for the the world? If well, I had, no. <laughs> if I had a tr if you had a tiara at stake and you have to give a very uh, good answer, I want less reliance on oil. Mm -hmm. That is what my wish is for the world. We need to get away from that. We need Clean to also power. yeah renewable energy, energy source that needs to happen and like whatever. Wind. Mm. Like exactly. It, we might have to take a few steps backward so that we can go on a different path, but that is something we as a people and as a species have to do. Mm -hmm. 
we have to. In Singapore and around the world, right? We live in such a stressful, especially in the cities. Mm. We live in such a stressful environment, and sometimes it's really difficult for us to just uh, slow down and smell the roses. Yeah. Not that you have to do it physically, but I was just speaking metaphorically. It'd be a nicer day if you did. <laughs> yeah, but do not smell all kinds of flowers because you might get uh, an allergy. How else would one find happiness in the things that we do and in our existence and just not be so uh, caught up in the, the race to just out each other on, yeah. on the bags and, and uh, watches and cars? I think, I think a lot of unhappiness that people have nowadays is because they are so caught up in all of that materialism yeah. and trying to please someone else. Mm. Um, it's nice to please your parents, make sure they're happy, they, they took care of you, but at the same time, you have to live your life and you have to make your decisions for yourself. So to me, what I would suggest to someone who is feeling very stressed and, and, and you, know, you, you don't know which way to turn, spend some time alone. The more that you know yourself, and the more that you discover the things that you enjoy doing. If you want to do pottery, go do pottery. If you want to do reading, you want to go sit on a beach somewhere and just blank out, then do so. But the more that you know yourself in the quiet moments, the more you can trust yourself in the loud moments. There was a song that went a little bit like this. Uh, I've been all around the world, but I've never been to me. Exactly. Uh, I've exactly. never been all around the world and neither <laughs> have I been to me. <laughs> Go to you first and then the world will open up. If you are on, a, on stage, right, mm -hmm. and you'd be in front of a lot of people yep. and you have to open your mouth and speak and you'd be... Comprehensively. Comprehensively. <laughs> coherently. <and> coherently <laughs> and concisely. And you'd... You try your best not to uh, make a fool out of yourself and that thought alone uh, would make you more <laughs> inclined to do such uh, a thing, right? <laughs> I think the first thing you have to understand about getting up on stage in front of people mm -hmm. is that it's okay if you make a fool of yourself. In fact, I look for opportunities to do that because once you get that out of the way, the rest of it is smooth sailing. Let me see if it's still recording. It'll be such a waste. Yeah, it's still recording. Sometimes this phone fails me for no reason. Uh, yeah. It's an iPhone. <laughs> no, I love iPhone. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I love HTC more. <laughs> HTC. I will not bow down to corporate sponsors. <laughs> XL is like this big. I was thinking, right? Well, uh, the back pocket exists aesthetically only mm. because you could not really put <laughs> stuff inside there without breaking it. <laughs> well, I, I can put this in there and walk around with it, but I, as soon as I sit, I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna break it. <laughs> but I, I believe this glass is gorilla glass. Yeah, so they, they had a gorilla sit on the phone, <laughs> and that's how they test it. That's um, a pretty good way of indicating, yeah. <laughs>